Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Oluwa Sheyala Day Art. Today I'll be reading aloud the Christmas story titled The Story of Babushka. This particular story is retold by Arthur Scully. All the villagers were out, bubbling with excitement. Did you see it again last night? Of course we did. Much bigger. It was moving, coming towards us. Tonight it will be high above us. That night, excitement like a wind scurried through the lanes and alleys. There's been a message. An army is on the way. Not an army, a procession. Horses and camels and treasure. Now everyone was eating for news. No one could work. No one could stay indoors. No one, that is, but Babushka. Babushka had work to do. She always had. She swept, polished, scored, and shined. A house was the best kept, best polished, best washed, and painted. Her garden was beautiful. Her cooking superb. All this fuss for a star, she murmured, muttered. I haven't time to look. I'm so behind I must work all night. So she missed the star at its most dazzling high overhead. She missed the line of twinkling lights coming towards the village at dawn. She missed the sound of pipes and drums. The twinkling tinkling of bells getting louder. She missed the voices and whispers and then the sudden quiet of the villagers and the footsteps coming up the path to her door. But the knocking, she couldn't miss that. Now what? She demanded, opening the door. Babusha gaped in astonishment. There were three kings at her door. And his servant. My masters seek a place to rest, he said. Yours is the best house in the village. You want to stay here? It will only be till night falls and the star appears again. Babushka gulped. Come in then, she said. How the king's eyes sparkled at the sight of the home-baked bread, the meat pies, the cakes, jams and pickles. As she dashed about serving them, Babushka asked question after question. Have you come a long way? Very far, sighed Kaspar. And where are you going? We're following the star, said Melchior. But where? They didn't know, they told her. But they believed that it would lead them, in the end, to a newborn king. A king such as the world had never seen before. A king of earth and heaven. Why don't you come with us? said Betasa. Bring him a gift as we do. See, I bring gold. And my colleagues bring spices and ointments. Oh, said Babushka. I'm not sure that he would welcome me, and as for a gift, huh. this excellent pickles fit for any king, cried Balthazar. Babushka laughed. Pickle? For a baby? A baby needs toys. She paused. I have a cupboard full of toys, she said sadly. My baby son, my little king, died when he, while very small. Balthazar stopped her as she bustled once more to the kitchen. This new king will be your king too. Come with us when the star appears tonight, he said. I'll, I'll think about it, sighed Babushka. As the kings slept, Babushka cleaned and tidied as quietly as she could. What a lot of extra work there was. And this new king... What a funny idea to go off with the kings to find him. 
Yet she could. Yet could she possibly do it? Leave home and go looking for him just like that? Babushka shook herself. No time for dreaming. All this washing up and putting away of dishes and extra cooking. Anyway, how long would she be away? What would she wear? And what about gifts? She sighed. There is so much to do. The house will have to be cleaned. When they've gone, I couldn't just leave it. Suddenly, it was night time again. There was the star. Are you ready, Babushka? I'll, I'll come tomorrow, Babushka called. I'll catch up. I must just tidy here, find a gift, get ready. The kings waved sadly. The star shone ahead. Babushka ran back into the house, eager to get on with her work. Sweeping, dusting, beating all the cushions and carpets, cleaning out the kitchen, cooking. Away went the night. At last, she went to the small cupboard, opened the door and gazed sadly once again at all those toys. But goodness me, how dusty they were. One thing was certain. They weren't for a baby king. They would all need to be cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. Better get started at once. On and on she worked. One by one, the toys glowed, glistened and gleamed. There! Now they will be fit for the royal baby. Babushka looked through the window. It was dawn. Clear on the air came the sound of the farm cockerel. She looked up the star had gone. The kings would have found somewhere else to rest by now. She would easily catch them up. At the moment though, she felt so tired. Surely she could rest now, just for an hour. Suddenly she was wide awake. It was dark. She had slept all day. She ran out into the street. No star. She rushed back into the house, pulled out on her cloak, hurriedly packed the toys in a basket and stumbled down the path the kings had taken. On she went, hurrying through village after village. Everywhere she asked her for the kings. Oh yes, they told her. We saw them. They went that way. Days passed and Babushka lost count. The villages grew bigger and became towns. But Babushka never stopped, through night and day. Then she came to a city. The palace, she thought. That's where the royal baby would be born. No royal baby here, said the palace guard. Three kings? What about them? asked Babushka. Oh yes, they came, but they didn't stay long. They were soon on their journey. But where through to? Bethlehem, that was the place. I can't imagine why. It's a very poor place, but that's where they went. She set off at once. It was evening when Babushka wearily arrived at Bethlehem. How many days had she been on the journey? She could not remember. And could this really be the place for a royal baby? It didn't look like it. It was not much bigger than her own village. She went to the inn. Oh yes, said the landlord. The kings were here two days ago. There was great excitement. But they didn't even stay the night. And a baby? Babushka cried. Was there a baby? Yes, said the landlord. There was. Those kings asked to see the baby too. When he saw the disappointment in Babushka's eyes, he stopped. If you'd like to see where the baby was, he said quickly. It was across the yard there. I couldn't offer the couple anything better at the time. My inn was packed full. They had to go in the stable. Babushka followed him across the yard. Here's the stable, he said. Then he left her. 
Papushka! Someone was standing in the half light of the doorway. He looked kindly at her. Perhaps he knew where the family had gone. She knew now that the baby king was the most important thing in the world to her. They have gone to Egypt and safety, he told Babushka, and the kings have returned to their kingdoms another way. But one of them told me about you. I'm sorry, but as you see, you are too late. Shepherds came as soon as the angels told them. The kings came as soon as they saw the star. It was Jesus, the Christ child, they found, the world's savior. It is said that Babushka is still looking for the Christ child. For time means nothing in the search for things that are real. Year after year, she goes from house to house calling. Is he here? Is the Christ child here? Particularly at Christmas when she sees a sleeping child and hears of good deeds, she will lift out a toy from her basket and leave it, just in case. Then on she goes with her journey, still searching, still calling. Is he here? Is the Christ child here? The end. If you enjoyed my the book you just read aloud, the story of Babushka. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and get ready for more stories. See you soon. Bye bye.